Welcome back, everybody, here to the final day of Super Week in the European LCS as I am joined by Rockats coach, coach Veggie as they're about to go up against Fnatic. Um, Veggie, your team is one and two so far here in Super Week. Talk me through from a coach's perspective. Give them some, some pointers, as you will, after these games. Well, uh, it would seem that we're doing okay when it comes to macro game, which we're trying to be working on lately. We've been trying some new stuff. Maybe some people have realized that we've changed a bit our mid game, and that's what we're working on. But uh, the problem currently is if we falter an early game, we're pretty much gone, which uh, showed in the game against Copenhagen Wolves. I mean, the game against SHC, I mean, it was pretty easy. Against Alliance, that was still actually a macro game element. To me, the reason why we didn't dive, and that's what we've been working on. So I wasn't disappointed then. But I was disappointed in the Copenhagen Wolves game where we probably mentally lost the game. We felt too sure, and that's why we were just in a wrong mental state before the game. Well, you were absolutely on top of everything. You talk about macro game, then what I maybe say is an element of the micro game. Those first bloods keep rolling in for Jankos and actually talking to him after the super hot crew win. First time I heard them being so confident and saying, we do want to prove that we're the best team here in the league. Is that something you guys as a team have actively worked on, on that attitude change? Well, it seems to me that we can be the best team in the league, but um, it'll take some time. And second of all, we don't really want to do worse than last split. I mean, we had top three spot. That was really good. And like, once you've got that top three spot, it's like bad to think about doing worse. So um, I don't know. Maybe best league, best best team of the league isn't the best. Uh, th like. How should I say this? Expression from Yankos, but a top three spot is definitely something we would be looking for. I mean, Worlds, like, there's no difference for us if we're first or third. Like, Worlds is the most important for us. Well, absolutely. The main goal. So then, finally, to get there, all the wins are necessary. What is the importance of the game here versus Fnatic? What are your chances? Well, uh, our chances, I don't know, like Fnatic's been doing really good, but um, we're definitely going to try. We want to win this game because, you know, there's no reason not to try. I mean, we're not going into all the, uh, I don't know, possibilities of tiebreakers and stuff like that, but it's obviously better to win a game than lose a game. And uh, when it comes to the mid-table clash at the moment, I mean, we have SK, we have us, we have SHC, and we have Millennium. And we probably don't want to play against SK. We don't really like the way our style works against theirs, but uh, we'd definitely prefer to play Millennium and SHC is maybe somewhere in the middle. So uh, tiebreakers could be important for us. I mean, we haven't done that well this week to like, we're probably gonna get sixth place. So it's more important for us who's gonna be in the third spot, someone that's good for our style or something like that. So you're gonna give it your all. Thank you very much. Always a pleasure, Rick. No problem. All right, so we're gonna get into this matchup. Rockout versus Fnatic with Trevor and Joe. Thank you very much. Always amazing to hear from Veggie get a lot of insight into what's going on in the Rockat camp. Yeah, and it's definitely an improvement. The moment Veggie started living with the team again about four or five weeks ago, Rockat did start leveling up their game, faltered a little bit. They played one composition in three games, won once, got bullied once, and went, okay. So we'll see if they're gonna do something different today. Well, with that, it is time for Fnatic versus Rockat. And Fnatic are 2-1, having lost to SK Gaming yesterday, but they did take down the Super Hot crew and the Wolves on day one. Fnatic are locked into that second place seed and will be playing the winner of the third and sixth place quarterfinal, which currently could be SK or the Super Hot crew versus Millennium or Rockat. Could be anyone, basically. Yes, you've just listed all four teams, so we need to see how it works out. Fnatic have actually looked pretty good this week, but after locking in their top spots, Fnatic and Alliance both dropped games. Regardless of the reasons for their losses, Fnatic have moved very close to securing some fantastic records. Let's start with Yellowstar. He's got 957 LCS career assists, getting very close to securing his 1,000th and joining Nif and Expecial. And on top of that, Reckless, in his second split of the LCS, has earned himself 154 kills this split. He needs to break 167, which was set by ManCloud last year. I'm not sure if he can do it in one game. Hell, he's done it before. He got 18 against the Copenhagen Wolves. We'll see if he can do it today. As well as nearly hitting the highest, lowest number of deaths in one split. Meteor set the record at 29. Reckless is currently got 27 deaths in 27 games, and that stat alone is incredible. He needs to avoid dying more than once this matchup to break Meteos' record. My brain is broken. But what I get from that, <laughs> Reckless needs to die less than two times, get two Pentas and a Quadra, and he gets both records. Yellowstar needs 43 assists in one game if he's to get to the 1,000 assist mark. 
A lot of work to be done. A lot of records to be broken. Who knows? Meanwhile, their opponents, Rock Out, are one for two for the week and have been a running a very similar comp in their matches with that Zillion mid. And since Millennium lost the match in their last game, Rock Out can still catch up to them and force a tiebreaker to get into the fifth position, which means they would face the fourth seed in the quarterfinals. We'll see if they can. It really feels like Rocket were just focusing on that singular composition we've talked about, and it focuses around mid-game pressure and winning the early game. While it looked solid against Alliance, they beat the Super Hot crew, they got absolutely controlled by the Wolves. It looks like the Wolves could counter-strat them and figure them out. Let's see if they do the same thing again for practice, or if they go back to something tried and true. If you do something over and over and over again, it makes the your opposition uh, job a little bit easier to try and counter that one. We'll see if they've changed it up for Fnatic. So let's get into the starting lineup then for our third game of the day. On the blue side, it's Fnatic with Soaz in the top lane, Cyanide in the jungle, Xpeke in the mid lane, Reckless on AD carry, and Yellowstar on support. And on the red side, it is Rockout with Zazus up top, Yankos in the jungle, Overpower in the mid lane with Sullivan and Vanda as the AD carry and support. And you guys have been casting your votes on which team will win today. And according to LOL Esports, Com. Who would have thought it? With 84% of the vote, Fnatic leads in another one. Yeah, another big vote in their favor. Lost a game yesterday uh, to SK Gaming. It was pretty one-sided. SK played, they got the lead and they held on to the lead, very crucially. And we'll see if Rocket can do the same. Rocket have been able to get early advantages in the past, but it's all going to be on Jankos. He's got the most first bloods out of any single player in Europe this split. Uh, 12 out of his team's 20. It's mind-boggling. It's mind-boggling, and it's been the thing that's gotten Rockout started in so many of their games. You have to wonder, I mean, he's kind of odds-on to get a first blood if Rockout actually secure it. Yeah. It obviously dev doesn't always snowball in a, a ridiculous style. We've seen him go three, four kills. We've also seen him pick up first blood and then it's fallen to pieces. So definitely first blood, not a guarantee of anything. Let's get into champion select here. Are we expecting Zillion to be gone after it's been run so often? I think you're a bit uh, psychic uh -huh. on that one, Joe. Instantly taken off the table here by Fnatic. Maokai might be another consideration. Alliance abandoned in all three of their games, did not want to let it through. And something that I actually didn't mention in the two previous games, Zareth has actually been disabled today after finding a bug related to his ultimate late last night. So that's not going to be in the hands of either Overpower or Peke, who have both run it in the past. So Maokai still up. Thresh taken off the table for Yellowstar. I'm so happy to see teams taking Thresh away from Yellowstar because he is phenomenal on that champion. Yeah, they've been... A lot of Morgana, I was just about to say, there's been a lot of Morgana bans in the past against Yellow Star. That's left open today, and you see that cheeky little smile. First pick Morgana for Fnatic. So we'll see where the rest of the picks and bans go. Uh, Ari is available, Fizz is available, Syndra is still up. Yeah, when, when was the last time we saw three bans against Fnatic and none of them were targeted at Peke? A long time, Joe. Yeah. And the reason I think Fizz and Syndra is interesting, Peke is still adamant, a lot of pros actually are still adamant, that Syndra is a counter to Fizz. And in theory, as long as you're hitting those stuns, yes, I can see it working. Overpower has run Fizz in the past. Peke has run both Fizz as well as Syndra. Let's see if they're going to go that route. A lot of thinking regarding picks and bans. All oh, the junglers, despite Evelyn, are still up as well. So Rengar's there. Cyanide's run Rengar in the past. Yankos is played a lot of the least this weekend. I think this would be the third time he's played it if he locks it in. Could be the third time that he gets first blood as well. Done such an amazing job on that one. And we, oh, last second switch actually out to Lee Sin. So taking the lead and also we're locking Cogmore for Selva on AD carry. For me, Selva has, has gotten a Ooh. lot better. Wow, we're going to see Blitzcrank coming out with Morgana. So. I'm not going to call this one too early because you've seen what happened in that game. Yellow Star ran Shen Correct. Top lane. in the top lane. Soaz ran Blitzcrank, Blitzcrank in the bottom lane. But we've also seen Soaz run Blitzcrank anyway in the top lane. So a little bit of context to the game you're referring to was when Fnatic did that against uh, old CLG EU last year. And it was to counter the Anivia. The Blitzcrank was able to get uh, the hook onto the egg form and it worked in their favor. I don't know if we're going to see that because this would imply a mid lane Morgana. Overpower ran mid lane Morgana for the first time a couple of weeks ago. It didn't work out. And I don't know if Fnatic are going to have some fun with us. Remember, they are completely locked into second place. 
So why not experiment? Why not have some fun? Well, for Roca, they're still fighting for a possible fifth place, for a possible tiebreaker game for fifth place at least. They're going to take Maokai and they'll also take Braum there for Vanda in the support role. So what are Fnatic going to do with this comp then? I'm thinking Blitzcrank into the support role, Morgana mid or my guess, so as just run Blitzcrank? My top? guess, if Fnatic are going to have some real fun with this one and they're going for style points, they would have to run something like a Vayne AD carry put Blitzcrank in Soaz's hands and run a Shen in Yellowstar's hands. Do a lane swap for this matchup and just go all in, protect the vein. Overpower and Rocket tried to use a protect the AD carry comp in a similar vein, but it didn't work out for them. And we'll see if Fnatic can make that one work out. Not an intentional similar player. Vein, really? Not intentional. That one wasn't intentional. <laughs> so, what are they going for then? 10 seconds. Come on, Vayne and Shen, just or do it. Gana, Blitzcrank, and Elise. Well, you got Vayne right, but we just completely somehow missed that Cassidy had not been banned in this one. And Fnatic, I'm surprised it even got through to the last pick, to be honest. It's going to be picked up. So that leaves us with Cassidy for the mid lane. And that means Soaz will play either Morgana top lane or Blitzcrank top lane. Hell, he could even play Cassidy in top lane and Morgana goes mid. Yes, we've seen Cassidy in top lane a couple times over in OGN as well, building a tanky, building an AP. There's options available to you. How that would do against a Maokai? Not particularly good until level six, at which point you can get away relatively easily. But, um, hell, you know what? It, I mean, Soez could take that Blitz top. I don't know what Fnatic are gonna do. I'm more disappointed the fact that we both missed Cassidy all the way through yeah. to the second last round of picks. It's been a long, long week. So for Rocket, mid lane, are they gonna go default and go Orianna mid? Or are they gonna go have some fun with Cassidy, uh, with Zed? I don't know, Silence, yeah. Cocoon, locked it's in. locked. I don't know what is happening this game. Zed locked in, first pick of the season. And wow, that is gonna be an interesting one. I I'm guessing that it's gonna go into the mid lane despite the fact that it's currently sat with Zazas up top. I think they'll swap that, I think they'll swap that. The thing that, the thing that Zed has to be careful with, or Overbar needs to deal with, is getting past the Blitzcrank, getting past the Elise. If he jumps on Cassidy and Cassidy just rift walks away from the shadows, you can avoid a lot of the damage. And you often see Veins run into Zeds in the past because Veins one of the AD carries with a QSS with the Blade of the Ruin King that can out duel a Zed. So this is going to be an interesting game. It's the last match of the weekend for both of these teams, and they're having a little bit of fun with these picks. So as is sitting on the Blitzcrank, whether he plays support or whether he plays Bruiser is going to be the interesting thing to see. So I'm going to tell you right now how it's going to go because okay. I've looked at the summoner spells on these monitors at the side and cheated. I'm going to save that for a little bit because we <laughs> need to check out the Twitter vote here. So guys, with those champions locked in, tweet hashtag FNCWin or hashtag RockWin to at LOL Esports. We'll see if we've managed to somehow sway you from voting for Fnatic. I don't think we have anymore because they've just gone and put Soaz on Blitzcrank as support and Morgana top lane with teleport for Yellowstar. No, I like that actually, because if Yellowstar can get a, a fair amount of farm, his black shield is gonna avoid the CC that Maokai's putting down. And as long as he hits his dark bindings, which he will because he's got so many support Morgana play, uh, games played, it should be a relatively safe lane for him as well. So everything's thrown out the window for the last game of the day for these two. Well, gonna be a fun one, that's for sure. We're getting into game, it's Fnatic versus Rocket. Fnatic have that second position already sewn up. They buy into the semi-finals. For Rocket, though, it's all about sixth or a possible fifth place tiebreaker game. Still decisions to be made and results to come up to decide if that can happen either way. Welcome but for now, Fnatic are on the move. And one thing that's really scary at level one is a Blitzcrank hook. Oh, uh, you mean a Blitzcrank hook into a dark binding? What could be terrifying about that at all? The thing is, for Fnatic to make that work, they need to group up. Um, it is still relatively early in that regard. So we'll see. Yellowstar, despite having Flash and Teleport, he's actually started with Spell Thief's Edge. So gonna be looking to maybe punish and poke Zazus, generate some gold. The later this game goes, the better Fnatic's chances are at winning. Vayne and Cassidy can become uncontrollable, and if they get a QSS and a Zonya's Hourglass, Zed becomes next to useless once those items are completed. So in order for Rocket to actually keep Cogmore alive 
from Cassidy and Elise diving onto him. And to actually keep overpower relevant, they need to get kills and a lead early on. I think they're going to invade here. We've seen Yellow Star actually pick up the Lee Sweeper's Lens, so they may try and make a move. We've already seen Soaz, Walt, Peke and Cyanide going to join them, moving down onto the bottom side of the map. Rocket are pinging like crazy on the top side. They've got no vision of the tri-bush and the move around that. You can see that overpower is just sticking way far back because he doesn't want to get grabbed into anything. And it looks like Fnatic are going to move. Are they going to try and get around the side of the You could always steal the buff. Easy blue buff steal yeah. with the rocket grab. And just three members of Fnatic. Early advantage. I think this was somewhat predicted. You know, Joe, you talked about the blitz and, and how powerful it is. For some reason, you almost always see those blitzes going towards the blue. Zaz is just going to clear out the camp. Oh. Or not, actually. Not even going to. So going to delay that one, delay the respawn time. And so as and Cyanide playing the buddy system. So we've got very interesting lane assignments. Uh, Reckless, still deciding which lane he wants to go to, has opted into the lane swap from the looks of things. No Star now going to try, maybe defend his own blue with the help of Soas. Well, one thing to do, pull it out the back and do it in the safety of that area. But look at this, they are going to be trying to fight Fnatic for this one, but we already see Cyanide moving in. So this will be a three versus two, and I think the presence there of an extra man might be enough. Oh, they've oh, caught Yankos. Oh, they're going to pull Yankos into that one. He actually goes up to the one. Here comes a TP as well. Rocco wants to find this one. They've gone for Soas. He flashes over. The tree of Zazas is in the way as well. And they back away. Dark binding lands. Can they finish off Zazas? Mid laners are totally ignoring this one. It's three versus three for the blue buff. Soas is going to have his rocket grab up he in a second. It. He manages to pull Vanda, who flashes the dark binding lands onto Zazas. Where's the execute? He comes in. His first blood for Yellow Star, but they're not done yet. Jankos going towards Soas. Slow from the red buff. Will it be enough? He's got him around the corner. Can he hook him in under the tower here? No. Salivar actually came in and stole that kill. It's a two for one for Rocket. What a start. Unbelievable start. Rocket taking advantage of the slightly uh, unique team composition from Fnatic. They group up, they go for the invade. And despite the fact that Fnatic landed the skill shots, I think Rocket properly measured the threat from Fnatic. Even though they burned a lot of summoner spells in the teleport, they come away with the kills and they come away from the advantage in the beginning of the game. So this is also going to put Sinai's jungle behind. As long as Yankos can get out cleanly, Peke doesn't have any uh, rift walks available to him. Not very well played. So 21st Bloods, tie for first actually. We're one behind Rocket in terms of total teams. Total team first Bloods. Jankos got a kill as well, though. It wasn't quite first no. this time, but kill nonetheless at 101 as Overpower taking a bit of a beating from Peke in this mid lane. Although, credit to Overpower, he's up in CS 32 25 with a similar amount of minions still remaining from this single wave. Crystalline Flask was the start for Peke. Actually, Longsword for Overpower in there. Also, so. also notice that Peke went for Flash Exhaust as opposed to Flash Ignite. So, looking to play a little more defensively against that Zed in the middle lane. And if Peke decides to itemize towards something like an Iceborne Gauntlet, he can also even build, you know, normal, effective items on Kassadin to help deal with the damage. Um, it's a possibility. Right, so Cocoon and Rocket Crab, those are the options. Zazus is in front of the minion line, he's caught. Oh, Cocoon comes in. Oh, oh he's pulled the minion! The minion steps in the way. And it's a landed grab, but not on the right target. And Sazas hitting his flash as fast as he possibly could there. So as on the roam, doesn't get anything this time. But Reckless is going to bully him around. And this means free farm for that vein. Same though for the top lane for uh, Selva on Cogmore. And look at this, they're coming back in. Saplin says no. So something we have to talk about just a tiny bit is some of the early items. Soez has already got that Sightstone stone completed from those early skirmishes. We see the flask on Peke just to try and survive that lane. They're going to catch Zazas, I think, if the rocket grab can connect. Yeah, he's actually going to go back into it knowing that he's not going to escape. Reckless, though, getting the kill. Don't want to give this vein a head start. Funnily enough, we talked about it earlier. Reckless needs 14 kills from this game to match Mindcloud's, or to beat Mindcloud's record, sorry. Last time we saw him go big on Vayne, 
got 18 kills. Yeah, I think I think it's a tiny bit higher. 167, he was 151. So 16 kills, I think, is the number. We'll get production to confirm that for us. But you're 100% right. If Fnatic can play Bloodthirsty, it can work out. Black Shield didn't even get used, so... I mean, it's definitely possible that I've added up wrong. I mean, it's considering that my math skills are literally the worst in the world. Well, I, 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 that up. I may have uh, messed this one up as well. So yeah, production will confirm in our ears in just a moment or two. But yes, I was talking about items. So, Soaz currently has the Sidestone, as we've already highlighted. He's roaming and he's playing that kill hungry searching support. Yankos as well started with the Doran's Blade and he's working his way towards that Spirit of the Elder Lizard. So also very aggressive itemization, which obviously led to that very low level engage and low level fight. And Joe, you were correct, it was 14. And with that single kill he's got now 13 away from uh, breaking that record. Let's see if he can do it. Whether, whether he actually realizes how close he is to that record because a lot of the time when we see these records broken, players aren't surprised afterwards when they do manage to hit them. We've got a couple of men stacking up here in middle. Yellow Stars has been given up somewhat on that top lane where he was soloing out. He decides to leave Selva all alone. As I said before, that Reckless doing the same down on the bottom side. Peke is ahead in CS in the mid lane as well. And if we compare the solo laners, which in this case is Zazas on Maokai's 25 CS and the 10 of... Uh, of Yellow Star, it seems hard to kind of really compare them completely since Yellow Star is also roaming around a fair bit. We well, need to see how Yellow Star actually makes this top lane Boots of Mobility Morgana work. Um, don't really know how to analyze this comp, Joe, because I think they're gonna end up it is a little support, bit of fun. Aren't they? Yeah, it's, I really think it is about protecting Pekka and Reckless. And if, if Cyanide, Soas, and Yellow Star can land their skill shots, it gives the carries the moment, the, the goal they need. Right, Yellow Star, we didn't see Black Shield last time. He's got no flash. Silva backed away. And, uh, you know, the other side is, if Fnatic are setting up this pick, you know, grab somebody, kill somebody composition, maybe they're trying to get the record. Maybe they want Reckless to get those 13 kills to break the most kills in a split that Mancloud set last, uh, last year summer. Well, we'll see if anyone steals next time they actually try. I mean, they've just tried once again to get in to that bottom lane. Yellow Star, you're trying to get rid of Vanda, who's not really having much of that, and is able to put back almost just as much damage. If you look at the overall picture, Fnatic have a slight lead in this one. We're tied on kills. Obviously, no turrets gone down as of yet. Blue buff coming back up, and this is where the craziness started. Triple long swords for Overpal. Gonna be looking to get as much instant power as possible. Yankos making his way in here. Yellow Star's got the numbers. I think that was just a little too slow from Rocket if they really wanted to pick the fight. And Fnatic secure their first, uh, the first blue buff after it respawned. And it's just, it's just shenanigans for the time being because Soas and Cyanide have been holding hands the whole time. They've been moving around the map. They've tried to gank Zazus multiple times, but Zazus has been rooted at his tower and has been completely unable to get picked. So Fnatic, while they do have two kills on the board, I think in the mid game, Rocket's composition is gonna be much more powerful. But as the game continues to scale and Fnatic get items, I think they're gonna catch Rocket. Oh, this could be really bad. It's gonna get knocked up after being pulled in there underneath the tower, but- He got away. He will get away here with a flash cyanide, trying to get on top of him. Here comes Peke from the side though. Is he gonna have the damage? Who's he gonna go for first? It's actually Selva that they've singled out. Exhaust goes down, Selva goes down, and that is Peke that gets the kill. He's gonna head straight back now towards the mid lane. First kill of the game for Peke. Managed just to secure another one, and that was just Yankos maybe looking to set up a dive on Yellow Star, and those buddies of Soez and Cyanide being in the right place at the right time. So they got the skill shots, locked down Yankos, and took uh, took Seliva out on the retreat as he was running through the jungle. But I think we need to keep a very close eye on what Soez does for these next few minutes. Because this is the first time that he's really split away from Cyanide. Still got those Moby Boots, got that Sight Stone. And one of the things you need to do with Blitzcrank is remain in control of the vision. If you do not have wards in your opponent's river or jungle, it's very difficult to have that threat zone for the rocket grab. And obviously you can catch your opponents unsuspecting if you have vision and they don't know that you have vision. Well, Rocker have seen him on the top side of the red buff. They've seen him now on the bottom side of the river. They've got full vision of where Soaz 
He's in fact hanging around. So has his pinion dragon here. Like, guys, I'm pretty sure we're clear to do this one. We could probably have a go, especially since Reckless down on this bottom side now. Peke may come in and join them with that one. In fact, we see Yellow Star and we see Cyanide moving in there as well. So, looks like Fnatic are going to be starting a dragon. They've got the numbers advantage without Selva here to fight for Rocket. It's a strong advantage. And the other thing, it's so difficult for Rocket to contest objectives. If Rocket actually move in for like dragon fights or buff fights, the threat of those ridiculous range skill shots, the rocket grab and cocoon and center are terrifying. Peke and Yankos. Uh -oh. oh, Yankos is in trouble. Yeah, but well, Yellow Star's gonna flash over, pops his ultimate. Where's Yankos gonna go? Oh, it kicks him back. Oh, oh here end. comes Peke. That was close. Yeah, I mean, Peke's obviously gonna finish him now. But it was a nice little kick over. I think he wanted to do it just before the soul shackles actually propped onto him, but he got stunned up, and that means the kill and a second one. Poor Pekin. Second Cassidy of the day. Didn't expect Cassidy to be getting through. He's come through fans three times this week, which is, I think, more than any, probably all the other weeks maybe combined. I. I'm not sure if that's exactly. I'd be inclined. True. I'd be inclined to say it's very close, because I do think we've seen at least three Cassidy in the split. So, equaling it. Yeah, this week. Uh, touche. Uh, with the exception of this week, but two wins, one, uh, one win, one loss. We need to see if Becker can actually secure a win here. He's 2-0. Oh. Gonna go either Hourglass first or Deathcap first. Got the makings of both. And the fact that he's getting kills means he can really make the choice he wants. Team's turret has been destroyed. Rocket, I'm gonna take the first tower. The problem for Rocket again, they, they've got two ridiculously scaling hyper carries on their opponent's team to deal with. And Overpower has not got going at all. He's even on CS with Peke. Every time we look at this middle lane, Overpower's behind in hit points. And Peke's bullying him. And Peke's roams have resulted in two kills. Overpower's not really been able to set the tone. Not really been able to get those shadows down and find the kills that he wants. Uh-oh, Zaza's gonna be in trouble here. There is the fist, the crap coming <laughs> in as well. The Kuhn actually moved away from, but I don't see him escaping. The Infight comes back in. Reckless gets his second kill of the match. 12 needed now to top Minecloud record. 14 is the magic number. Reckless hits 14 kills this game. That's when he breaks that uh, highest kills in a split. Gonna need to do a little bit more work than this though. Every single time Fnatic are trying to catch Zazas out. That's about three, four attempts for the kills that he's managed to secure. And again, look, Peke going aggressive on overpower. Despite the fact that Peke's sort of got lane control, it hasn't resulted in uh, overpower losing out on CS. Thanks to the energy, thanks to the range, he is farming effectively, but we need to see how overpower is going to deal with Reckless. Blade of the Moon King already finished. Well, Rock are saying, you know what, you can roam around the map. We're going to call you out on this one. Get three men down to bottom. Take our second turret of the game. Nicely done by Rock at. So for Rocket in these tower defense situations, as Fnatic have grouped up, they may even be looking uh -oh. for Vando or Zazas to get caught. Because if you can deliver the tree or the Braum to get their ultimates into the middle of Fnatic's squad, that could work out. Right, let's see. Reckless is playing the role of a lumberjack this game. Because he's really just trying to focus on Zazas. Overdrive, come on, can we see? No, just Mr. Vanda's in trouble. Oh, Vanda gonna get cocooned up here, surely gonna go down, puts in his shield, actually will get away. Zazas, though, won't be getting away from this one, and Reckless gets another one. Overpowers death marks on Peke, they get a kill back. Cyanide now gonna be chased by Yankos, who will flash into this one. Here comes the rest of the team. Where's the grab? Where's the knock up? Knock up does come in. Here comes Reckless, gets himself another. Will he want to fight Selva? No, decides against it. Four kills down now. Managing to get closer and closer. One for two trade. Overpower gets on the board with his first kill. And yes, it was on Tepeke, but that was Fnatic playing you know, a bit fast and loose in the turret. Uh, catching Van Dijk, you know, all props to the spectators. You guys caught absolutely everything there. Um, and it was Peke just diving. Two tower shots, remember, a couple patches ago, those tower hits, they hit their max damage after two shots instead of three. And obviously, even through the exhaust, that death mark was enough. So uh, Peke gets dropped. Decent start for Overpower, but he needs more. He needs to do that to Reckless and to Cassidy uh, or Peke multiple times to be more relevant. And Peke's already finished his Hourglass. So that reduces one target for Overpower team fights. Yeah, and Reckless is kind of getting ahead of this one. Blade of the Ruin King. Gonna be getting that Ghost Blade here soon enough. 
Speaking of that, Ghostblade is done for overpower over on the other side with his Cutlass to start. So, back into uh, a more normalized game, and as I say that, I see there's another I don't think you can man. use that phrase. No, I don't think so either. Yellow Star <laughs> and Soaz are literally just running around with those boots of mobility. We're going to have a Talisman here coming in as well for Soaz pretty soon, so he's going to uh, have that extra spoo uh, speed beast? <laughs> speed boost. Speed boost. Speed <laughs> boost. I prefer Spood Beast. Spood Beast. Spood Beast is much better. They're going to have that Spood Beast to chase people down. I actually like what Soez is doing. Because of the high root durations on both Cocoon and Dark Binding, when you combine the knockup, which can't get reduced from, you know, Power Fist and the CC of all the other champions, Soez holding hands with multiple members of Fnatic is just creating this terrifying death squad. Because the moment a single skill shot lands, everything else follows up, and then bye bye, you're dead. Flash oh! hook! Almost a flash hook. It was definitely a flash. The hook went wide. They get the turret nonetheless, forcing them away. Salva did flash himself to get away from that. As Peke also just riff walk away. Did catch the cue from Bram, but no real worries. Five seconds until Dragon comes up. Oh, they actually scanned that one out. Look, Look at the it. speed of Soas here. Nice move off to the ward. What a constant threat there, because once you actually pull someone in, that's it's it. going to be a cocoon, and then a dark binding, and then everything is overpowered. He's going to get himself caught out here as well. He's going for Reckless, but Reckless gets another kill. Unstoppable now at 5-0-0. Can they get the rest, though? I think the Rock had her away from it. Fnatic are intentionally leaving these kills for Reckless. They've put together this comp to single out targets of Rocket, and they're pulling it off. It's unorthodox. But it's working. And in order for Rocket to actually counter it, they need to group up as five. They need to jump on Fnatic. I don't think they can, though, because every time they try, somebody's just going to get singled out and blown up. Don't really know what you want me to say, Joe. Oh, I was going to say thanks, Captain Obvious, for that one, but I suppose. Hey, you got you got to point it out. I mean, there's, there's no other option here for Rocket other than to group up and force a 5v5 because they have a tank, they have frontline, they have disruption. But then they have to get through silence, they have to get through Morgana, they have to get through the stealth of Vayne. So many things to burn through. And with Reckless having QSS, Overpower's less likely to blow him up with Deathmark now. Yeah, that's going to help prevent him uh, losing out on the death's record. I think less, is, he's allowed... Two away. Two, okay. Two to even it, one to break it. Oh, Zaza's going to get caught out here. Where's Reckless? He's not close enough. They can't give it over to him this time. Zazas is going down, and it's Peke that gets the kill. I'd love to hear their voice comps. I wonder what they're talking about. But yes, Rock had another time they caught out. Unfortunately, with the champions that Fnatic have put together, the last time Reckless had a start where he went 5-0 and in vain, he proceeded to go 18-0-1 and, and picked up the first pain to kill of the summer split. And all five of those kills were on Youngbuck, the top laner of the opposite team. <laughs> this is a rinse and repeat. Oh. Right, Rocket are grouped, but Dark Binding. Can they get through the rest of it? Cocoon! Let's see if they can make it in, Joe. I don't uh, think they can. Soaz is running away from this one. He's going to leave the rest of the team. There is Cyanide going up. The death mark is already down. And that's a dead spider. Overpower gets his second. So the moment Rocket are able to group up and pile on Fnatic, yes, their composition right now is still weak, uh, stronger. Because they have a well-rounded team, a well-rounded team fight comp. But if every single time Rocket get caught in skirmish positions, they are going to die. Reckless is close, Peke is close. Let's see if they can connect. No. The answer's no. <laughs> Peke kind of spoiled the party there. He just dives in on top of them. But they will be clearing out a couple of wards, and Reckless is now in that mid lane as well. As you said, QSS bought for him to get away from the death mark, to get away from the limited amounts of CC that Rocket are going to be able to throw him if they can get on top of him at any of these points. And the other thing to note as well, Yellow Star's got no items. So while Xpeke and Reckless are going to continue... I just bought a new right. While Xpeke and Reckless are going to continue scaling and continue doing very well, up until this point, Reckless was not doing a whole lot. He's going to grab himself that Zonya's Hourglass and literally just look to disrupt team fights. As long as Soez and Yellow Star peel, slow down, stun enough people in a team fight, 
Reckless and Cassid Reckless on Vayne and Expecto and Cassid can just destroy all of Rocket. Oh, Rocket actually gonna be spotted here going over pink walls and actually pushing with three men straight down this middle lane. Let's see if they can actually get themselves a turret pick. Wow. Just gonna blast over there and this turret gonna become a quick focus, but Rocket had to tank it up there a little. Peke might actually do a bit of chasing. He's got an hourglass, so he can even jump in to start the fight. If so, as in Reckless were closer, but they didn't. They couldn't close the gap quickly enough, so decide against it. But I like the fact that Rocket are grouping. I feel it's probably a tiny bit late, but as long as they remain grouped up, uh, the combined power of the composition can help. But they can't get, with, can't get caught by those Rocket grabs. That is game-changing. A lot of vision going down to try and counter this as well from Rocket. If you look there, top side of the jungle is all Red Wards. They've got a few down on the bottom side of the map as well. And we've still got a couple of minutes until this next Dragon actually comes into play. To look down the items, Talisman is done for Soa. So, well, you're not escaping from him, basically, is what the story is there. Cyanide now moving forward to get some wards of their own down. Just spotted Silas on the top side. He just finished off his golems. And there are three men there, and Rocket are actually going to try and counter it with four of their own. So let's see. In order for Rocket to actually defend these towers, I don't think they want to be caught in a position where they have an extended wave clear battle. If Fnatic ever land one skill shot, the rest follows through. So in order for Rocket to defend these towers or defend sieges from Fnatic, they have to go all in. So if Rocket have been doing a pretty good job of warding up. Despite the fact that Fnatic is clearing the red buff, look around the river and the middle lane for Rocket. There's multiple wards down. They need to keep the vision game up. And this could get explosive quickly. Fnatic are split up, or Rocket are slightly tight in it. That's the ward straight on top of Soas. It makes it pretty dangerous if Fnatic are baiting out Baron to come anywhere near them as well. With all that CC grabbing, cocoon, dark binding. And then the follow up from Reckless and Peke doesn't leave much of uh, many people, but, I think, on Rock if that happens. But you see the awkwardness now for Fnatic. They accelerated to a, a lead, but because they don't have the vision in Rock jungle, it's very risky for them to invade blindly. And if, let's say, they, they throw a blind hook into the bush without vision, it doesn't connect. That opens up the window for Rocket to attack. It's a small uh, window of opportunity, yes, but as long as they're set up, maybe playing a death bush they can kill Fnatic. So in order for Fnatic to continue making this comp work, they need to get deeper vision, they need to have... Uh, need to look for members of Rocket that are alone, and then try to get themselves some kills. So Teleport is available for Yellowstar, he's going to join the fight. Oh, Peke actually gonna be focused on here, there's the death mark coming down, he's got his Zonyas though, will he actually be able to get away with it? They've lost Yellowstar, they've lost Peke, and Cyanide might be in trouble as well, Q will connect from Yanko, Cyanide goes down, and it's a 3 for nothing for Rocket on Dragon. Overpower just 1v1 Peke, despite the fact Peke was able to Zonyas hourglass that death mark, Peke, uh, Overpower dealt all of the damage just through basic auto attacks and spells. Peke also held onto his exhaust. He did not use it over the course of the fight. So advantage Rocket. The mid game, I still feel, is in favor of Rocket. Despite being down on gold, their team fight presence is still strong. Now let's see what they can do with this Baron buff. So as thinking about a steel, Reckless is hanging around. Rocket are going a little low. This is two on five, it's gonna be difficult. I think they're gonna go for it, well, we'll see. So as off to the side of this one, can he get in there for the steal? He's waiting till it goes low. Rocket actually starts to move away and it's finished off in the end by the smite of Jankos. Can they get kills from it as well? There is a pull. They've managed to get Vander in, but he will flash straight out. Dark Binding has landed. Reckless going to focus him. It's another one for Reckless. 6 0, zero. Talisman pops as well. So as wants himself another Peke. grab. Peke on the side. And there is the grab, it's over, Pilot gets caught, Binding lands, and Reckless gets number seven. Cocoon out of Cyanide wasn't quite open, just like that. Fnatic able to get two kills of their own. Yeah, we do see Peke going very, very low, and Rocket took such a long time at getting that Baron down. Fnatic able to get their resources in place, and Reckless seven kills away from breaking the record. They've taken the Baron buff off two members of Rocket and opened up this top inner turret to a lot of damage potentially taking it down before Rocket can even respond. Yeah, they're going to come out of the base here with that Baron buff still on, but I think Fnatic are going to be able to get rid of it. Yep, there we go. Inner turret goes their way. 
Four to three in towers. Still Fnatic holding about a 6,000 gold lead. Or a 5,000 gold lead because my maths are rubbish. And Peke coming back out of base. Death cap now for him on top of that Zonia's as a void staff well and truly on its way as well. Both teams actually moving towards the dragon pit here to get some control of that. That previous fight, nobody secured dragon. Rocket were able to get the kills and then they immediately peeled for Baron. And again, if Fnatic just get grouped out, if Fnatic get jumped on, they don't have Wreckers with them yet. And Rocket need to have... Rocket need to be decisive. They need to be uh, willing to jump the moment something's available. And Peck is just using his Riftwalk to his advantage. In, in and out, that one. reckless now coming around. He was waiting for his red buff. Actually, Yellow Star going towards this middle lane. And Fnatic are going to say, okay, you have yourselves a dragon, and we're going to push and we're going to take your inventory. Yeah, I think Fnatic will be very happy with that. In order uh, for them to continue keeping control, they need to have map presence. And the moment Millennium start dominating the map and keeping Fnatic in control, their ability to find picks dwindles. So fifth tower of the game secured for Fnatic. They hold on to that gold lead. Oh, oh this is going to be scary. Can it connect? That's the question. Who's going to be the there's, man? There's no vision for Fnatic. Oh, they do actually have. There's the ward. Too late. Yeah. Oh, actually trying to bait Vander into that one. Sapling actually did come over. That's going to reveal all of them. And Fnatic back away, but still up on towers. But we saw what happened when a, a straight fight actually comes in. It's still very, very hard for Fnatic, especially since... Overpower himself is only getting stronger. He's going to have himself that last whisper in a moment. He's got a lot of damage and he was able to 1v1 Peke, but again, Peke did not use his exhaust. He may have resigned to the fact that he was uh, going down. So I still feel Zed does fall off against focus teams as the game progresses. If he's able to find a solo target, um, there is the potential for outplay. But I think it goes both directions. A Kassadin and a Vayne can also outplay a Zed if they use their QSS and their Hourglass appropriately. But we'll have to see. I mean, Overpower 3 2 0. Just a little bit of CS behind Peke. He's been able to be relatively uh, positive in these last fights. And Fnatic, I, they, they can't really siege. They don't want to group, they don't want to be jumped on. So. Just going to continue looking for those picks, continue looking for when Rocket push an objective, and then when Rocket push the objective, Fnatic find an opening and secure the kill. All right, let's have a quick sip of water there after clearing out the bottom wave. He's seven kills away from getting that record. In, I think in any normal setup, you'd say it's not very likely that 14 kills would have been pulled off done it already this year. They've got the 18 kills, of course, against the Copenhagen Wolves. And they've certainly set themselves up, gifted every possible kill when Reckless yep. has been there, giving him all the farm as well. And once again, Fnatic gonna go hunting, trying to get some vision down, this time on the bottom side of the Rockat jungle. And why is that? Because the last inner turret left standing is on that bottom side of the map. Reckless is gonna push the wave up. I'd love to see Fnatic playing on the side lanes here. Catching somebody through the tree line. But of course, Reckless isn't with them, so once he brings the minion wave, that's when Rocket needs to put on their dancing shoes. They have to avoid those skill shots at absolutely all costs. Well, all right, minion wave's up. Fnatic are not going for the tower yet. I still feel they need to have a pick and a numbers advantage. Even now, in about 30 minutes. But I'm not going for it. Minion wave already cleared by Rocket. Their wave clear is very strong. Fnatic, on the other hand. Can't get too close to these turrets without having a bit of an advantage on it. Without maybe hooking someone in or getting that dark blinded onto one of the important targets. So as again looking over the wall to pick anyone that's out of position, but Rocket know how to play this one. They're playing it safe. If Rocket go into their jungle at all, when this moment is happening, when Rock, uh, Fnatic are clearing the wards, it is a monumental mistake. They simply can't. <laughs> Great, Cocoon catches Zazus, instantly cancels the potential engage. And what Fnatic were doing is just getting vision control and waiting to see if Rocket danced. So Yellowstar's caught up, there's multiple members surrounding him. We may see a fight, but Rocket not fully committing yet. Black shield on. I think Rocket might be ready to move forward. And again, the Cocoon's thrown their way. He 
dark windings coming out of the side. We've got a minute until that next Baron actually comes in. Look at this. Soaz has actually used his speed to get around in front of the tower before Rocket could get there to stop them just pushing it down with that positional advantage in mid lane. Almost. Rocket were dancing around trying to find a fight, but you notice how scared Fnatic are to pull Zazas into the team. If Zazas yank us a van again in the middle of Fnatic, there's a lot of crowd control they can put down. So Fnatic have to be very careful with who they hook. Yellow Star's got teleport available, but he's going to take some time to get to the lane. Three members of Fnatic on wave clear duty. They've lost the tower. Yeah, this Reckless tower. Will be here late. He's going to go down here. It's Celeber that's just hammering away on that. But there is Peke managing to get the slow. Can they pick anyone out of the team? Talisman is available. There it is. Going to get pop. TP comes around as well. They managed to catch out Zazas. Vander is at half HP as well. Meanwhile, Yellow Star right in the middle of the team is going to stun a lot of them. Reckless gets another one. There is a double for Reckless. Can he get any more from this? Ekathi and Surprise doing a lot of damage. Reckless has flashed on the top side. Slowed down. Vander's unbreakable will stop him. And Overpower there trying to get around onto him as well. Deathmark not even used. Fnatic get two kills. Yeah, they managed to chase Fn uh, Rocket all the way back. A very good teleport from Yellowstar created enough disruption that Rocket was splitting up. And that allowed Reckless to get two more kills. It's five away from the rec uh, record. Blade of the Rune King is available for Overpower. He's looking for a kill. Yeah. He knew the QSS was down. He watched it happen in the previous team fight. So, sniffed towards Reckless's general direction, but couldn't find an opportunity. And Reckless, Infinity Edge, Ghost Blade, Blade of the Rune King, and Quicksilver Sash. 9 0 0 and approaching 300 CS. Going to get himself there a, another red buff. Soas is going to spot Vander over the top. Was actually going for the wards there, trying to bait them out. That Baron now live, of course. Last time caused a bit of a uh, ruckus around that Baron. Yeah, Rocket were able to get the Baron, but got chased away. Uh, they took too long. There's a lot more damage on Rocket's side now, but they're not going to have the free time. They're not going to have the opportunity to go for that objective. Reckless wants to split push, but look at that massive wave in the bottom. If Reckless shows himself, Rocket may decide to go for Baron. So instead, just juggling the aggro of that dragon and I'm gonna secure it. So Fnatic maintain control. They've got a, a, a decent gold lead. And I think the damage levels that they're starting to build up on Castanet and Vayne uh -oh. are becoming absolutely terrifying. Well, for Rockat, they've spotted that Reckless was down there. He's just trying to get that yep. wave pushing in their direction. And Rockat just going to turn straight onto Baron. It was pretty obvious that that was going to happen. The thing is, for Fnatic, if they get AoEs down, this could be scary. There's a Death Cap Hourglass on Yellowstar. Let's oh. see how many targets he hits. Zazus has come out very, very far from this one. The Baron is only at half HP. Can they dive into it? Reckless now has got to the halfway point of the map. Can they get it? They can! Fnatic! steal the Baron, it's Yellowstar that gets that one, his ult is running in the pit and this is going to be a whitewash, Reckless coming in, that's one kill, that's two, three, three kills for Yellowstar, that was almost, should have been the Penta probably for Reckless, Yellowstar gets himself the triple though, it leaves Reckless with 11 kills, a Baron and an ace for Fnatic. They melted Rocket. Rocket overcommitted to the Baron. When Reckless was moving through the mid lane, they needed to have peeled and bailed out. You're dealing with an AoE silence from Blitzcrank and an AoE soul shackles from Yellowstar. He stunned up four members of Rocket in the pit. And just another great performance uh, from Yellowstar on that Morgana. This time it's a top lane bruiser Morgana. But nevertheless, just take a look at the engage. Very patient from Fnatic. They don't go in until Baron is low, and Reckless is about to cross the mid lane. At this point, alarm signals have to be going off. How does Reckless Yellow Star steal it? Is it with just tormented soil? Yeah. Managed to it get was, that one it, done. It was a smite from Yankos. He smited it yeah. and missed it by one tick of the tormented soil. Reckless comes in there at the end, and I think it was the tormented soil that actually got him those yeah. extra kills at the end as well. Double for Vayne, triple for Yellow Star. Infinity Edge, Mercurial Scimitar. The makings of what's going to be a Phantom Dance, I imagine, for Reckless. He's three kills away, Joe. Three kills away from breaking Man Cloud's record. And Two he's kills not from died. And he's not died yep. yet either. Yellow Star, sadly enough for him, despite his Morgana with a Death Cap, with a Void Staff. <laughs> it's pretty with a difficult to make. With Glass as well, and he's, he's running Elixirs at this point. He's got 10 assists, he needed 43. 
I mean, that one was probably never in a very long time going to happen in one yes, game. Yes, I agree with that. Reckless, though, is very close to hitting not just one, but two records. Well, we'll see if he can break them both. Overpower. Going <laughs> to be forced to use that shadow to get away. Fnatic now 13,000 gold in the lead. Despite the uniqueness of their comp, they've got such a strong lead with Baron and with their items that I don't think Rocket can go toe to toe with them anymore. So, in order for Rocket to pull this one off, they have to punish Fnatic for over committing and looking for kills. Salva needs to be behind the minions here. Gotta be careful. That is not a place to stand when they're waiting over the wall with a Blitzcrank. And a Morgana, and an Elise, <laughs> and Cassidy yes, to dive on top of you, because they're going to pile up. Oh, flash there from, was it a flash? Or uh, safeguard. Safeguard. safeguard for Yankos. Okay, flash, I thought. So that's one thing as well, coming off with the exception of maybe Zazus, uh, as well as Saliva, three of the members of Rocket can actually dash through some of those skill shots. Here comes Soaz. Oh, they pulled Yankos. Yankos pulled into it. He's not going to survive either. It's Peke that gets that one. And now Fnatic, five versus four on the inhibitor turret. They're going to have super minions pouring into the base in just a moment, which makes the job of taking the second inhib a lot easier. What are they going to do? They're going to wait it out a bit. This is difficult times for Rocket. With this loss, they are looking much more likely at taking that six. But look at the damage onto Saliva. Fnatic got the opportunity. So oh. Rocket grab, which is so close to Vanda. Very close. Black Shield actually stopped Vanda's ultimate from knocking him up there as well. And that is the second inhibitor falling. I think Fnatic are going to do this possibly by the textbook because they still want three more kills onto Reckless. No, it's a textbook. You win the game by taking all of the towers and the Nexus, Joe. And the record. That is, that is the way it works. But you can't blame them. Truthfully, the few times they have had team fights, it's kind of gone 50-50. You know, Rocket did look okay about 20 minutes ago, <laughs> unfortunately. You mean the one, just except the bad. big one at Baron There's, where Yellow Star That was just a all. bad decision. I mean, you're <laughs> in the pit against a AP Morgana. Overpower should have known what was going to happen because he played mid lane AP Morgana. That's the perfect scenario for you and that champion. So anyways, another tower going to fall down, uncontested. Yeah, and I think right. Fnatic are just going to keep sieging this one up until he gets the Nexus. So, eight turrets down. Rocket, lots of gold behind. Scrying Orb actually going over there. And they're just waiting once again. South just scanning out to see if there are any wards on top of the position. I mean, it's pretty obvious where Blitzcrank and Morgana are yes, going to be waiting exactly. at this uh, uh, this stage of the game. Don't go near the wall. Oh, so close. So, so close. Enkos is uh, toying with his life, I feel. There's a ward just behind where they've been scanning as well, so... They've actually been spotted this entire time. Well, we knew they were there, despite the the vision. And of course, those living artilleries haven't had the best accuracy, actually, from Saliva. Not that it matters. I'm afraid. They have 40 minutes on the clock here. 11-0-3, Vayne. 0, zero 15 Blitzcrank. He's a double James Bond, plus one. <laughs> <laughs> now that Hibbert falls and Fnatic lets super minions in two lanes. Once they group up, Fnatic really just have to push down this final inhibitor. Um, there we go. They finally got the oh. very close. close. So has so is, has actually been very good on most of his hooks. And despite missing, uh, it wasn't even a miss. He did a flash hook earlier, and Salva actually flashed away from it. Oh, they're he's actually going to go for Soas here. He's going to have to get his ulti off, get that silence in there. He does it in the last second. Yellow Star will also be using his Zonyas. Where's the rest of Fnatic? They're trying to get in there. Peke is going to do a ton to them. Cyanide will lock up one. Cyanide actually getting the kill there onto Salva as Peke gets the slow. The minions are killing the base. The minions might stop Reckless from getting his record. There's the slow coming down. Vander is low. Zazus is going to get onto the fountain. There's the hook onto Vanda. Reckless gets that one. 12-0-4. He needs two more kills. There's two more there for him. But they're on the fountain and the they're minions. not going to give it away. Can he get them? There's another one. He needs one more. The minions it's have the killed it. Yeah, and Reckless it. misses it. Look at he him. Misses it by He's destroyed. One kill. one kill is the difference. Peke, Yellow Star, and Cyanide stole all of his kills. He does, however, equal the record of that set by Mancloud. It was so close as well. <laughs>
<laughs> so ridiculous. And inside of the Baron pit. So despite, despite the composition and despite whatever you want to argue, the mindset, Fnatic were locked in second. I love seeing unique compositions like this. Just because it's off meta, just because it's different, does not make it bad. And I'd love it if teams were more brave to do these kinds of comps in higher pressure situations. If you've got the ability to play them and do them, why not pull them out? That's what's fantastic about League of Legends at all levels as well, that you can do something like this in a normal game, and you can do something like this in an LCS game. I'm not sure there are many people out there that would go 13-0-4 with Vayne no? like Reckless did. There is one thing, while he did not get the kill record, he can be celebrating the lowest number of deaths in an LCS split. Hey, he almost broke kills. He's one away from kills, and he died 27 times in 28 games. You can call him, you can say whatever you like, but that is a fantastic, fantastic stat. Yeah, averaging less than one death a game is just... It's pretty ridiculous. He says wonders about his positional play. Yeah. Also tells you that sometimes he might play it a little bit safer than he should do. I would have said that in the spring split. I yeah. would have said that in the spring split. If you, if you discount one game against the Wolves, we got 18 kills. And now one game, we got 13 kills. It is still an impressive amount of kills in a split. Yeah. But it, uh, bar none, uh, one of the best AD carries Europe has ever produced. Also want to give credit to Yellow Star here, playing that full AP Morgana. That Baron fight was all about him. Yes. They <laughs> pulled out Zazas, he just dives in the back, pops his ultimate, steals Baron with the last tick of the Tormented Soil, steals Reckless's record with yes. more ticks of that Tormented Soil. If Yellow Star had been a, a better support, a true support, a true support he would have given Reckless the kill record, but he didn't. Scumbag Yellow Star, that's the way it is. Well, always nice to see something a little bit different. And of course, Fnatic already got that second place locked up. So guys, we're gonna take a look at the playoff bracket. Rockat is now locked into the sixth place seed. We just need to find out who they're gonna be playing. Interesting to see. We don't know who's gonna finish third, but whoever wins that matchup, there's the possibility of a Rockat versus Fnatic rematch at Gamescom at the semifinals. Quarterfinals, of course, will be next week here in our studio, best of fives. And we've got a few more games today to figure out who will be taking those uh, spots. Yeah, still a few more games to come. Still possibly, in fact, no, there is definitely tiebreakers now yes. because of that. Uh, actually, the last game with the Super Hot Crew said we definitely get tiebreakers. Me and Quickshot are prepared. We've been yes. folding our paper vigorously <laughs> throughout this one. And actually, if we do another fold here, Quickshot, let's, let's go. You, you do that. One. You figure that one out. I don't want to take responsibility. So, we've got four options. Gambit and the Copenhagen Wolves tied and Millennium and Rockat tied. Two tiebreaker games. Yes or just a single one with Gambit in the Copenhagen Wolves side. We could also have Basically, SK and Super Hot Crew tied, Millennium and Rockout tied. We could still have a lot games. more tides, guys. So you better stick around. It's going to be great. We're going to head over to Shox and Deficio, though, who are standing by with Fanatics Reckless. Thank you very much, Joe. Um, I think a congratulations is in order here, tying for the record for most kills and making that record for least deaths. But I gotta ask you, which of your teammates are you most mad at right now that they took that last kill? Um, I'm not actually sure. We made a call that I need 14 kills. That was actually like one of our main strategies going into this game. It's pretty in-depth, you know, but that was our strategy and we got really close, so it felt a bit sad in the end, you know, but <laughs> I don't know. We do it as a team, so. It's fun anyways. But it must have been absolutely fantastic going into the game, knowing you could get the record. Just looking back also at your season, every single game you play is pretty much a perfect AD carry game. Why are you so damn good and why am I not so damn good? <laughs> uh, I'm not actually sure. I think my strength is in my work ethic. Like I play 24 seven, if you can put it that way. Uh, I just try to put as much time as possible in the game. And even when I'm not in the game, I'm just thinking about the game. So. I guess I'm sort of a nerd, if you, put it, <laughs> if you can put it that way. That is not a bad thing by any means. Um, let's focus on the game for a little bit because talk me through the comp and what the idea was. Obviously, they wanted to help you out as much as possible. Was everything going exactly as planned? Did they surprise you anyway in the picks? Uh, we got a bit worried, actually, because our plan was to first pick Morgana, which like sort of counters Elise, because we wanted our Elise ourselves, and they were like hovering it in the first rotation, so we got a bit worried. 
because it was a big part of our composition because our composition was all about like hooking, seizing, and then just killing that guy for me. So, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, it was, we, we got us the picks we wanted pretty much and our like main guy in the team was Soas, of course, setting up all the kills for me. So it was really fun actually playing this game. And we do actually have a team fight. It's not really Soa setting it up, but we can just pull it up on the screen here where Yellowstar is the guy. You make sure some people are in place so you can pick up the kills. We can just run it here. And you told me just before, you were the guy making the call here. Yeah, so they were pushing mid as five here and Yellowstar was farming top and he said he would back and get another large rod and then he would TP mid here. I was actually the one making the call that he could TP on the mid. And the, the sort of like mindset going into a chase like this is that you can't chase too hard because then they're just gonna turn instantly and kill you all. But you can't change too slow because then they're just gonna run away. So we had found a good mixture with the Cassidy where you just uh, rift walk E and then the Morgana came in at a good timing and we just locked them all down. And just to inform you, you almost killed Vander here, but he actually survived, so you didn't get yeah, the last kill. Yeah, it feels so close actually. Yeah. With so many <laughs> games I can just think like, wow, if I got that kill it would still be one more, so but it, it's fine anyways. The game all together, was there any part where it was hard? Because I can imagine you have this comp and it's all for you, but you can't really see your tower that good and you have to rely on some other things to play around that. Um, the idea behind Vayne is always to face a top laner and we were a bit worried about them playing an AP top lane because that's sort of the thing that's good against Vayne, like a Lulu, Gragas, Rise, because it's really hard for me to like one we want them. So it was, we were a bit worried walking into the game, but they picked Maokai, which is like heavily countered by Vayne. He couldn't do anything in the lane. And then I got an early QSS against the set, so I could basically go wherever I wanted in this game. I had some moments in the game where I was grouping too much, but still like we had so much control of the game actually. So looking at playoffs now, you guys of course straight into the semi-final, waiting to see who you're actually gonna face in the semi-final here. Who do you hope to face? And will Fnatic go to Worlds? Uh, I'm pretty sure we will go to Worlds. I will make sure we don't fail at least. Uh, but I don't know, we are fine with facing any team actually. And I think every team is really good, so it doesn't really matter. We're just gonna go into the game, do our thing, and then hope it works. Yeah, you said obviously going to Worlds is the absolute goal and um, when I've talked to you before you've always said I want to prove what I'm worth on the biggest stage and we know that you weren't particularly happy with All-Star, so how does that mingle into the quest of going to Worlds? Um, this time I'm not going to take a break, that's for sure. I learned my lesson before All-Stars when I went home. Uh, I lost a lot of practice time and then it just I missed out on picking up Twitch, which was like broken in that patch. So. That's the thing I might not have missed out on if I stayed in the house and just practiced as much as I always do. So I've learned my lesson. I will not go home again, even though I miss my family. But I will just stay in practice and hope to perform. Everything to win. Well, we'll see you guys in the semifinals. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, we need to recall the base, but when we come back, the Super Hot Crew will take on the Copenhagen Wolves. Tango down, main it, main it, main it. I'm coming back, they're I'm coming now, I'm soon there. still doing it. I'm soon there, I'm soon there. I'm soon there. We kill them all, we kill them all. I go, I go, I go, I go, I go. Wait a bit, wait a bit. Oh. Nice. <laughs> I'm coming now, I'm coming now, I'm coming now. I'm on lead, I'm on lead. Nice. Three kills, man. Three kills. Three kills. One down, one down. He's low, he's low. You can get them both. I got Maokai here. Oh my god, oh. Did you see that? Oh. 